Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. In June 2021, I left my garden office behind and moved house. Uh, me and my family moved 35 miles away, um, so quite a distance, and fortunately I couldn't take my garden office with me. Um, but I wanted to make a video and, and kind of show what I've been up to in the last uh, year, year and a half. Um, basically, after packing up everything and, and taking it to our new home, um, we had a home survey done, and it highlighted that quite a lot needed to be done to the new house that we had bought. And uh, we had some idea of what we wanted to do, Anyway, we had some plans and everything, and I thought I'd go through and show you what, what the house looked like when we moved in and what we've done and the process it's kind of be. So it'll be a bit of a slideshow, um, but hopefully if you're interested in kind of construction and um, you enjoyed watching me put my garden office videos together, then you might enjoy this as well. So, uh, so here's the living room of uh, the house that we bought. The house was built in 1965, so it's a solidly built house. Um, but it was in desperate need of, of updating, as you can see here. Um, I believe the last time this room was uh, decorated was in the 1980s, about 1984 actually, if uh, what I found is anything to go on. And there's a view from the other side there. This is the hallway looking from the living room. You can see the front door there. You can see like a little set of stairs um, that kind of got around the corner and up the main set of stairs. And then you've got the kitchen door and the dining room door in front of you. And this is looking into the dining room and then out into the garden. And that's from the other side. Fantastic old little hatch there. And this is the kitchen, complete with the fire hazard ceiling, uh, as uh, as we called it. Um, you can see there we've got a back door. We've got a door to the pantry on the far left there, just in shot. And um, yeah, you can kind of basically see that it's, uh, it's, it's pretty dated and kind of cobbled together. And there's a view from the other side. And you might notice as well that the pink... Uh, kitchen is completely different from the other kitchen so I think there was kind of two kitchens merged to make one kitchen interestingly if you watch the uh, Paddington films they have a blue version of this kitchen as well so um, I think this is an original kitchen and then that's looking up the stairs you've got the understairs covered there and kind of stairs will go up around the corner and then this is on the landing um, so you can kind of see kind of all the rooms off of the landing and uh, that ladder that was left there. And then this is the uh, what I now have as my office. Um, it's kind of the, the smallest room out of the, uh, the four bedrooms. This is the main bedroom. The main bedroom from the other side. And you can see over here that there's this kind of lead. Now we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a lead for the uh, electrical sockets. Uh, this is the second largest bedroom which has its own built-in cupboard it's the only bedroom that has that a little landing cupboard with the smallest radiator i have ever seen there and more storage on the landing the bathroom with a walk-in shower not particularly attractive looking thing but a fantastic shower and that's from the other side there and then very small little room with a toilet in it and uh, yeah, also looking quite quite dated. Not uh, not my choice of decor at all. And then this is the uh, other bedroom here, and you can see this kind of this kind of silly pillar here is actually the uh, the flue from the chimney in the kitchen. And that's looking at it from the other side. And here's a view out into the garden, and you can see the uh, the back door is kind of into the garage there, and a, a shed. Uh, which has a date stamp on it. It's as old as I am, which is uh, quite funny. Someone's obviously lovingly kept it going all this time. Uh, we've got an apple tree here, but everything was very overgrown. You know, nothing. Uh, I think the person, as most people do, probably think, oh, I don't want to mow the grass for somebody else. You know, so uh, I won't and I won't trim this and I won't do that and so on. So there we go. But we've got a pond, and the pond's lovely. It's from the other side, and from under the apple tree there. And this is up in the loft, you can see uh, it's it's actually quite well insulated, but there's all these old sort of floorboards there, and we've got a chimney on one side, which at some point had been taken off uh, of the roof and was just sat kind of just below the roof line inside the house. And there's a larger chimney from the, uh, the other side that comes up from the living room and then goes through the master bedroom and then up into here. And this was something quite interesting we found. Um, we didn't see this when we were looking around the house because there was a picture over it, but uh, this was on the chimney breast um, in the living room, and it's a clock point, an electric clock point. Apparently, up until the 1980s, clocks weren't capable of running off of batteries or the batteries weren't very good, um, so they were wired into the mains via these sort of central clock 
point. And this was actually live. I, I used a tester on it and I found out this was in fact live. Um, but yeah, after after sort of a point in the 1980s, um, clocks started to run on batteries instead. And so we kind of lost this from our houses really, but this one still had one. And you can see all of the various colors and things that this room may have been from uh, the paint splattered around the edges. This is probably the beginnings of, of something that we're gonna be talking about in this video. Um, basically one of the things they highlighted was that all the electrical wiring was original and was in fairly desperate need of being upgraded. Um, it was all very old and as you can see this is you know proper old main switch there and then they had these various other switches for things that have been sort of added and adapted over time onto the sort of the, the fuse box and when i say fuse box i really do mean fuse box this was the box here and this was the original electrics in the house you can see we had a bar fire five amps 15 amp sockets that's the ones in the bedroom i'll get to those uh, and the fridge and the clock uh, and that was it. That was all of the lighting. That, uh, sorry, all of the uh, the electrics that they kind of had, and they had um, lighting obviously as well, um, which wasn't labelled on here. But this was just kind of tell you what was what was here. When I say fuse box, I do mean fuse box. These were actual uh, ceramic uh, fuses with the wires ra wound round them. And um, I did manage to blow one of these several times, and I had to find somewhere that uh, still sold the fuse wire and learn how to wire fuses for a, for a few months. Um, but yeah, they were, um, they're pretty old. So you can see what we're dealing with and you can see what we need to upgrade. This is a very small consumer unit that was put in really just for, I think when the, the shower room, the bathroom was kind of fitted. Um, so it's the newest bit in the house, but it only ran, uh, yeah, shower room light and fan and, uh, the shower room, uh, heater. So one of the first jobs we wanted to do was take out the chimneys from the house. We wanted to make more room. That little sort of pillar that was in uh, the smallest bedroom, uh, it's actually my son's room, um, that was kind of making it really awkward to place a bed. So we thought, well, we'll take out the chimneys and, and we'll kind of start that process. So I had a little knock around, and having never done any of this before, and um, decided to go up in the loft and see how easily the bricks kind of came out. And they came out pretty easily. So this was on kind of day one of me doing this. And you can see the uh, liner for the... Um, whatever it was that was at the bottom of the chimney uh, all here uh, and like I say this had already been capped off the roof had been repaired uh, and new felt laid and everything I think they had the whole roof off at some point so um, this chimney was below the roof line which meant it was fairly easy to just start taking it out and uh, bringing the, lock, the all the bricks down from the loft was, uh, was a lot of work this was just a very small amount of them uh, and there it is all kind of gone and I've uh, I've chipped these off kind of clean um, as well. So this is actually completely flush here and that's gone all the way down to kind of this level. And then uh, moving into uh, my son's room, um, I had to start chipping off every, uh, the, the render, it's like a render on the, on the brickwork. It's not sort of plaster or it's not plasterboard or anything. It, the whole house is like this. So I had to start chipping away and exposing the brick and then uh, kind of just trying to find find where to start really and then I managed to get my way to the top and then start working my way down and I did find that it was important to remove all this render because if you didn't um, it really held all the bricks together the bricks didn't want to come off very easily so you had to kind of remove it all in order to to get the bricks out easily and uh, and there we go it's all gone <laughs> you can see it's cut back there and uh, I've taken the liner out and I just cut it down to kind of just below here and then I did cover this over and cover this over with some uh, uh, some board that I had and then this is this is uh, something to poke around in the living room and uh, yeah it turns out that all of this um, kind of cornice coving uh, up around the ceiling all um, polystyrene um, which I have seen before but uh, it's always amusing when you kind of find it and uh, for some reason I kind of shifted gears because we're using the kitchen I thought well I need to make a start on doing something and in, in kind of the other side of the house and I thought well I can take out the the front of the of the fireplace basically I can take that out um, so I started doing that and, we, and in doing that I noticed that at some point you can see there's a line along here and there's a line along here and I think this was a much wider kind of open fireplace that was then kind of bricked up and made smaller into a more controllable smaller fireplace uh, at some point probably when this room was uh, kind of last decorated this way there you can see that all gone and uh, this was rock solid this was just a single pour of concrete so trying to get off was really really tough but i did manage it uh going back upstairs to my son's room um 
I noticed that unfortunately they had built the chimney first and then built the walls up against everything and all the walls were you know they're all solid walls had they have built this wall one inch further forward it would have meant that I could uh, I didn't have to do any more work but this this part here actually stuck out by an inch so it meant that we had to take down this section as well in between uh, this room and the small bathroom um, so the next thing was to look at the other side kind of trying to work on both chimneys in tandem uh, they were one of the messiest jobs so I wanted to get it out of the way and we needed to take the chimney off the roof on the other side so um, uh, my wife took a picture of myself and my dad who kindly helped um, take the chimney off uh, the roof there along with the lead and so on and then moving down to the ground floor started taking all of the uh, all the render off and kind of preparing all of that for uh, being knocked down and you can see it nearly clean my dad helping me there and then moving directly above that um, into the master bedroom so you can see you start taking it out there you've got some sort of little lintels there and whilst this was happening, I think what happened was uh, the hammering had knocked something down the chimney and fallen into a pile of soot. And despite having this board up, the dust just flew out of the sides. All the soot flew out the sides and went everywhere. They went, it, the, the whole room had to be cleaned. Everything in the room had to be cleaned. You can see here the, the dust on my son's little sort of toy push along lawnmower and my footprints walking to this part um, everything had to be cleaned and so it's quite greasy so um, it's it's really difficult to clean off of everything you can see all the black stuff here on the sort of the play-doh things and everything like that oh it's awful sofas the lot everything everything has to be cleaned and here's me halfway through hoovering it you can see how bad it was it was a nightmare just horrible and you can see how much of it when I pulled the board back had come down the chimney um, but yeah, maybe if if I was doing it again, I think, yeah, I'd probably get the um, chimney swept first, knowing that there's nothing left to come down it. And if there was, it would just be bad luck. But yeah, it was a nightmare. So what I then did, and what I probably should have done in the first place, but you know, I didn't know, you live and you learn, uh, was tape up the chimney with some plastic, which I had some big polythene sheets. And that just made sure that anything else we were doing, tapes all up around the outside as well. Nothing was going to get through here. I was determined. <laughs> and uh, I, I taped it all up and, yeah, it kind of meant that when we were working above it, nothing would come down. So then uh, once we'd gotten all the render off, which was just kind of a useful thing to get, get going on, I started up in the loft. And you can see at this point the, uh, the roof had actually been repaired where the chimney was. Um, so that's all good. New felt and tiles and ridge tiles and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, and that was done by my uncle, which was uh, very helpful. We did a, a sort of a swap. He got a chimney pot and a bit of lead, and he just repaired this with a few things he had kicking around. So that was that was really useful, and it helps to keep the cost of all this down because um, you know doing large amounts of renovations, large amounts of work does cost large amounts of money usually. So I was uh, trying to trying to just um, you know watch the pennies at this point, especially after we had just moved in. So yeah, taking all of this out, and you can kind of see the flue comes up this way, and then the bricks go down that side. There's a board sort of supporting them for some reason, and then there was just huge amounts of bricks this side, and then sort of like a support this side. I'm not quite sure why. It, a lot of things felt a bit unnecessary, but I guess they just did it differently when they did this house. And then you can see it sort of making its making my way down now, getting rid of it. See how black everything was there. And there's more bricks small amount and there's my dad helping me again at another point and just taking all of this out we've now lofts done and now we're working our way down so there's one section done and then the next section done down into the living room and then getting ready <laughs> so i was i was thoroughly prepared this time so i covered everything in plastic i wasn't having any more accidents and uh i've got the yeah the chimney's all still you know uh, covered up there and then I made a kill room for it. That's at least that's what I called it, the chimney kill room. So it's like a, a room within a room of plastic, all sealed round everywhere. Uh, and that's a kind of a view inside the kill room. So I could work on the chimney without anything else coming out. So I start working my way down as a huge chimney. And uh, at this point I came to this massive, massive pour of concrete. And I, uh, up to this point I was using hand tools for everything. 
Um, and I started drilling into it to see if I could get sort of a point where I could hammer in, you know, one of my cold chisels and break off a large piece, but it was a nightmare. So anyway, um, at this point, you know, we were in sort of, a, you know, big negotiations with, you know, uh, builders and uh, electricians and plumbers and all sorts of people to do all sorts of things to the house. And uh, the builders kindly lent me their breaker, which made short work of everything. I got through everything very quickly and you can see it on the floor down there. Um, <clears throat> and we got to the lintel, which was a huge, great big heavy thing. And then got it, got the rest of it out. That, that is the chimney gone that you can see like how dusty it was inside the kill room. This is after I took the uh, the uh, the plastic wrap off of everything. <laughs> so uh, so I think that was a good a good call. And there we go. That's what that looks like. And you can see here that there's I think there was a number of things kind of done on the cheap in this house. And you can see the cabling here, for example, above where the uh, behind the cornice or you know coving, whatever you want to call it. You can see it's not chased into the plaster work here but it is here all the way down and then not at the bottom it's a very strange thing and you can see it's sort of bulging here it's exactly the same but you can see on the wallpaper where it is chased in so and then where it pops out again up there very strange but there was all kinds of things like this so at this point we were basically we we're going to take out the wall between the dining room and the kitchen and to do that we have to put in a steel beam and some pad stone you can kind of see the eye of the steel beam there and then the pad stone uh, below it kind of as a sketch on the wall and uh, we're also going to take out and reconfigure the stairs to make room for a downstairs loo i'll kind of show you how we do that as we go um, and there's the pad on the opposite wall uh, in the dining room so this is the kitchen wall, the sort of the, the kitchen dining room wall, and this is where it'll be in the outside wall. And uh, before we took the wall down, I wanted to show you these were all original switches. Um, they all look like this, so properly old. Um, someone suggested to me that they might have been Baker Light. I'm not sure if they were or not. And this was a tiny little plug socket, which I think was the what they the telephone plug socket that was labelled on the fuse box. And this was right round the corner of the stairs. Um, it didn't work there was there was no power to it at all but it was there and there's this is uh me starting to take off the uh, render for the uh chimney in the kitchen um so it had a little i think a little firebox or some sort of i don't know access point for something at some point and you probably would have had a back back boiler or something in here um <clears throat> but uh, given the size of the flue above um, i think it was mostly used for maybe hot water or heating or something anyway maybe a, a, an oven or some description but we've got this mess the spaghetti of pipes where everything's been adapted over time and whatnot and um yeah so it's taking off more render and then even more render and as i was doing that you know wallpaper's coming off everywhere and and uh, that's another view of the bottom of the stairs at this point you can see i've taken out the bot the uh, under stairs cupboard because it was quite large but wasn't particularly easy to get into it wasn't very useful and we already had this unit from our old house and we thought that was more useful to us so i took it out there we go take the door off there so it gives you an idea of that's the kitchen that's the dining room and kind of what's about to happen really and as you can imagine taking out two chimneys takes you know a lot of a lot of bricks you get a lot of bricks and this is a this is the view this is all the bricks and rubble and everything outside my house and this isn't all of it you know this isn't the the kitchen has yet to come out so uh, yeah you can see how much there is uh that it takes and this is where they decided to notch out the bricks to take out these two doors and the idea is we were going to brick up these two doors um to make you know, kind of all the access kind of internal so the only access was like the was the back door and the and the front door this was an old coal store and there you go that's the uh view up through the living room to the master bedroom and then I, i'm continuously working my way down uh taking out all of the bricks for the chimney and i can't remember where i found this but there's just a whole load of stuff was found in this really old bits of newspaper and all kinds of things um but uh this might be a chewing gum packet i think that says chewing only um but i couldn't find any dates on any i looked through all these little bits of paper i couldn't find any dates on them sadly i got to this part of the lintel and i realized that the lintel was not sat on top of these bricks but it was actually embedded in this back wall as well as being sat on top of these bricks 
So what we had to do was drill large holes all the way along the back of this lintel and then break it off, essentially leaving, you know, the, that uh, piece of the lintel in the wall. And um, yeah, that was that was hard work. And yeah, so this is a proper proper wall being made back up again um, between the bath and my son's room. There you go, proper plasterboard, and this was all insulated as well. And uh, because the we had removed the chimney and removed, uh, you know, various bits and pieces and we we're going to have things chased in and all that sort of stuff, uh, they said, oh, you'll need to remove all of the um, wallpaper as well so that the uh, plaster can come and skim that wall. So here I am, stripping wallpaper. And in the process of uh, taking off the wallpaper, I realised that at one point there used to be a window here. Um, and you can see it quite clearly kind of, you know, as a, an object there. And then if you look on the other side of the fireplace, you can see the other one. Uh, like that so yeah it would have been symmetrical and this is the coal store the door is off now and you can see that there's a metal sort of liner in here ready to uh, put the brickwork the block work in um, and this was literally where you used to dump coal um, ready to be uh, burnt wherever it would have been burnt in the house and used and you can see yeah, it goes right up the walls like that um, and there was no coal in it you know when we moved in um, at all but uh, but yeah, we're going to block this off because you, the idea is that we knock through this wall here uh, into the pantry, and you can see the little pantry window, um, and then block it uh, the the pantry off on the kitchen side, and then knock through the back of the stairs, which is kind of over here, to make this section into a little downstairs loo, and uh, you'll see how that works. So there's the stairs taken off there. So we, you know, the stairs you just come around and then down two steps. Um, but the idea is that we're going to actually move the steps around the corner and then knock out this section here to get uh, access to the uh, to the into the this will be into the pantry and then into the coal store which is behind here. And then we are sort of working our way through, taking out the chimney still, taking out that lintel, blocking up the doorway to the pantry, um, and we drilled some holes ready to uh, to knock this wall through into the coal store. This was found um, stuffed underneath the stairs. Uh, Walls Gay Time Chalk Bar. Uh, now I've had a quick look at this and it looked like a, a series of kind of, you would have had like a carousel of sweets and things in a news agents. And um, apparently uh, Gay Time was their range that they had of all these things. So uh, this was a chocolate bar from the range. I haven't been able to find a huge amount about it at all. I haven't looked for a while, but um, yeah, <laughs> there it was. It's quite nice. So I've, uh, I've held on to that as a little memento of something we found in the house. And then a plasterer came and he started plastering up things. This is in the master bedroom. You see that's all made into a nice corner now. No more chimney. And uh, then in the bathroom. And then in my son's room as well. And then at this point our spindles arrived. So we wanted to Im improve the staircase, the look of the staircase. We didn't like the sort of boarded staircase. Um, and I know that if you're you're quite fortunate that if you're in a Victorian house, you might well have had spindles and then they've just boarded over the top of them at some point. But sadly, this was a 60s house. It was just boards. Um, so the boards are going to come out and we're going to put spindles in. But they had arrived. So we've got these quite nice kind of ones with, I can't remember what they were called, but um, they, they've taken a little edge off the corners there. I thought we thought they looked quite nice. And there's the living room as it stands at the moment. So we've got plasterboard up here now. So uh, make my way down. I accidentally went through this cable with the breaker and this was the cable to my boiler. So uh, I did fix it. You can see it just about down here. I did fix it and you can see the spaghetti of pipes. I had to work my way around. Um, some of which like this one have been cut off. That one had been cut off. Um, you know, these ones run to the boiler, which is over in the corner over here. So uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a real nightmare, but it's nice to see it kind of all getting tidied up. And here you can see uh, the... It's been knocked through the um, knocked through for, into the pantry from the coal store, so it's the first time really you got an idea of what the space was going to be like, how big it was going to be. You see our water main coming in the bottom there, so uh, so yeah, and then the uh, the opening will be here to the downstairs loo, and you see the mess, the mess of uh, consumer units and fuse boxes and whatnot. But by this point, we had had a smart meter put in ready for. Uh, being able to charge our electric car on a, on a kind of a better schedule and all that sort of stuff. So um, some of the groundwork had been done and we wanted to get this done before we had all the electrical work done just to make sure that we had, you know, we'd kind of try and do everything in the right order as best we can. And uh, speaking of orders, if it seems like I'm jumping around a lot in this video, it's because I was, I was literally being sold, oh, we need to do this today, we need to do that today. And then I was thinking, what do I need to do 
you know, in a week's time, two weeks time, that kind of thing. And um, what what do I need to get done first? And it was literally just, I had to go wherever the work was taking me. And um, I was working nearly full time as well during all of this. So a lot of stuff was done in the morning or the afternoon or my weekends. It, it was relentless, absolutely relentless. Um, but moving back into the uh, kitchen diner area, you can see that the uh, pipe work for a radiator that was here has been taken off. You can see how sun bleach the wall is there. And this is uh, this is one of our builders there. He's taking out the kitchen, and you can see how it's it's all kind of kind of coming apart there. And the view of the wall, and then the wall starting to come down. So they use the hatch as the kind of opening, I guess, and then went up and down, and uh, just started taking it out. We've got act props uh, propping up the ceiling just to make sure it's all all safe and good. Um, this was a supporting wall. Um, there, the the wall that runs between. Um, the sort of second bedroom and my son's room um, is directly above this wall that's coming down and we had um, a company come out and do a load of uh, structural calculations and checks and things like that to work out what size steel beam we would need and where it would need to be placed across this span um, to ensure that it it was supporting um, and, and made safe everything and then we had building control come and sign that off as well um, which is something you need to do if you're kind of doing this kind of thing. And there's the stairs out, or rather the uh, the boards uh, running down the stairs. And, you know, we will be putting in those spindles quite soon. You can see there's a great big box of them down here. That's going up stairs there. I'm not sure if it was ever all yellow or whether it was just, you know, they, it, it was yellow and that was kind of like a primer almost. And then they uh, painted it afterwards. But it, it, it was a kind of a, it wasn't just a primer, it was like a gloss. So really unsure might have just been yellow at some point and there we go there's the wall out so you can kind of get an idea of of the space will be it's very cluttered in here at the moment but um, that'll come that'll come soon and you can see we had to go all the way out here as well round the corner because the pad has to sit over here and then the beam sits all the way along there like that um, and you can see we've got some electrical work going uh, still still here uh, we've had some things taken out and we've got this one hanging down from where the, next to the hatch and everything um, just to be used for like a kettle and stuff but uh, of course the more you do with all of this the less sockets you have and all that sort of thing and that was going to re really become quite difficult to deal with um, moving forward and then you can see the steel beam there being lifted in there to go kind of in out in out and part of the in out was to go out of the window and then back in <laughs> to get it all all to uh fit in the right place and there's the spindles going in and then they're kind of all in there like that and you can see on top here the steel beam that's in uh, on top of the pad stone um, and the doorway's been blocked up as well and there's the new steps so this is you come down the steps instead of having sort of a big landing piece and then two steps down to over here they kind of move the steps around the corner. Going up into my son's room, you can see they're starting to take up like the floor and uh, or the carpet rather. And you can see that the carpet has no underlay, none whatsoever. It just had this kind of lining paper underneath it. Um, so that's um, that was an interesting discovery. And uh, they start putting in the all of the waste, I guess, pipes uh, for the toilet downstairs toilet. So they had to start, uh, you know, doing all of this and then uh, digging out a. a thing that went over to the drain that was in the driveway there and all of the rubble and rubbish uh, you know m several radiators needed replacing the boiler needed replacing um, this is probably skip number two or three maybe um, you know there was just so much so much rubbish you know when you start pulling all this stuff out of a house and uh, finally we got our electrician in uh, so this was a full house rewire we had done um, and a new boiler and a sort of a lot of reconfiguring of the uh, pipe work in the house as well. So you can see here, this is the chimney in the living room and uh, chasing in the sockets for this double socket and then a network socket and a, uh, that's cat six ethernet socket and then um, a coax socket as well for the aerial and chasing into the brickwork to get it all nice. And then going into, uh, this is uh, gonna be the light switch here and um, another double plug socket essentially to replace this single one that's next to it. Um, and these were all put in, you know, sort of a better height and everything like that, a more standardized height than, than all these sort of random old ones were. Um, and this is behind the living room door. 
more pipework going in. You can see it just sort of terminates there, doesn't go anywhere, but as essentially this pipework will go along here and then down and then uh, through into the boiler and everything. Um, so yes, the corner of my son's room, you can see all the plaster work there from where the chimney was. And then on the other side, and this is the boiler. So the boiler. We've had the boiler moved into the garage, uh, essentially moving it from, uh, here's the kitchen. This is where the um, the gas pipe came out of the gas meter and then went along here and then uh, into there. And then that would have been the kitchen the other side. So we had it moved. Um, and then all of this was, was put along here. And you see we've got a new gas meter as well. Um, the gas meter we that was there when we were moved in was on this kind of bracket. And it was, the bracket was nearly coming out of the wall. And uh, as we're having smart meters put in, obviously have a smart gas meter as well as a smart electrical meter. So um, so yeah, it's all nice and nice and neat again. And there's the pipe work coming in um, to the house that comes out there and, and goes on up. And we've got hot and cold feeds and all of that. But uh, yeah, once, um, once they started that work, it was a little while before we had heating or hot water. Um, Hot water wasn't, uh, sorry, heating wasn't so bad because it was sort of August, September when they were doing this. But um, I don't recommend having cold showers for four weeks on end. It's um, it's not pleasant and it is something that I had to do. Uh, this was the wallpaper behind the radiator in the uh, on the landing. And um, yeah, it just, <laughs> uh, I guess the whole landing was covered like this at some point. But uh, yeah, my goodness. And then chasing up, so obviously you come down from uh, on the down on the ground floor. You come down when you're chasing, and on the uh, first floor you chase up because all the cables go along kind of under the first floor floorboards. And here's the we had the uh, beam overboarded. This pink stuff, I think you do sort of one or two layers of this, and you kind of fireproof the, uh, the steel beam essentially. And going back upstairs, uh, looking under some of the carpets, I found that it wasn't just lining paper. Um, some carpets had um, old newspapers underneath, and this one was dated, yeah, 20th of April, 95, from the Times. And uh, being a um, web developer in my day job, and um, I have a general interest in computers and computer history as well, um, I was sort of fasc fascinated to see this heavyweight PC package at a lightweight price, you know, 1,500 quid, 25 megahertz Pentium processor, you know, it's just, it's amazing how far we've come, you know. And at this point I thought, well, we're creating this great big room kind of downstairs below both my children's rooms. And it's, I can imagine, you know, kitchen, uh, kitchen, a diner, um, it, it, you know, gonna have people over, you might be entertaining, um, you know, you, you will want some music down there, that kind of thing. And I thought, well, I don't want it to be loud in the kids' room. So um, I thought it would be good to insulate the, the floors. Um, and I saw that you could buy acoustic insulation, um, not just kind of regular old kind of loft insulation, if, if you will. So I decided to, um, to do that. So I bought one of these, a pallet buster, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, fortunately, you know, they'd already taken up a few floorboards and done quite a good job of it. Um, so once I just unscrewed those, I was able to get to the next floorboard. And what I did was I ran my circular saw um, along kind of the, the top of a joist, basically, you know, taking care to sort of adjust the depth. So just take it all the way along here to kind of cut off the boards for a room and then all the way along the other side and then use the pallet buster just to pry the boards up, pulling the nails out. And then I hammered out all the nails and um, removed all the tongues. I ran my circular saw along each of these, um, each of the, in between each of the boards and that cuts the tongues off. So when you lift them up, they don't snap off or sort of break or anything. And you can see a pile of the tongues kind of over here and the insulation ready to go in there. And I also hoovered out all underneath the floors as well. Uh, and this, <laughs> this was when I was repairing four floorboards. I found this, this was the floorboard directly behind the toilet. It says Jim Slade was here. And uh, it says 1953, but I think that was a measurement because the house isn't that old. Um, but I just found that amusing and it looks like someone's kind of crafted this with maybe the end of a screwdriver or the end of a chisel <laughs> um, and thinking probably thinking no one's going to find this or you won't find this for a very long time so yeah don't know who Jim Slade is but uh, hi Jim and there we go it's moving uh, into the next bedroom as well now um, doing the same thing there 
And we had a little, um, this was uh, latex and it was poured into the space where the stairs were taken up to kind of bring it more up to floor level. You can see all of this is now done, a bit plastered in there. All of this around the pad stone is now done. And uh, as we were moving through room by room, taking out all the electrics, we you know discovered all kinds of things like the old wallpaper that was in this room. I believe this was in my daughter's room. And then around a, an old double plug socket. And all the back boxes were wooden. You know, they weren't metal back boxes at all, or uh, kind of patras boxes. They were, um, yeah, all wood for something to screw into, I guess. But yes, yeah, old kind of wallpaper there. And uh, above it, and I stripped the wallpaper off her, uh, her room. It said, uh, paper kittens, two rolls. Wood was to be white. So yeah, I wonder what the paper kittens look like. There's more chasing and electrics going in, starting to see cabling going in now and this uh, into these kind of um, this kind of capping here. This is by the front door. So we're going to have some things above here. I will have all my kind of network uh, equipment above here for a while. Um, and you can see the uh, we had fiber. Fortunately, where we are is, is fully fibered. So I've got a fiber cable coming in, no phone line, just fiber. Um, and that will kind of connect up up here. So, and these are actually the Ethernet cables coming in from the first sort of round of Ethernet um, networking we had done. Um, I have since redone the whole house, and that will be coming in a subsequent video. So yeah, a bit more going on there, a bit more electrics. And this is the state of the electrics. So when he said, you know, you need to have this um, replaced, they weren't kidding. This was just us. So all I did was take off a, uh, a light switch. And yeah, you can see it crumbling and falling to bits. It's not safe at all. So uh, yeah, it just gives you an idea. Desperately needed to be done. And I liked this. This was behind the um, light switch in my son's room, a little electrician's note from uh, the 24th of November uh, 2000. I quite liked that. And there's uh, the living wall completely plastered. So it's amazing to see. You can see how much space you know we've saved. I mean, this is how far the chimney came out you know this was the main bit and then this was like you know the tiled front and uh you know it, it makes a huge amount of difference the amount of space you have in a room and uh unfortunately my television decided to stop working at this point although it was on a warranty and went off for repair but i had to use a spare computer monitor um <laughs> for a few weeks um yeah just to watch tv and this is looking at the uh the hallway so i started stripping all the wallpaper off of this because this was going to get painted the whole house was going to get painted and uh, we've got the spot up here ready for my um, wi-fi access point which uh, lives on the ceiling and then, yeah pulling more of the wallpaper off down here and then this is the kitchen so you can see we've got spotlights uh, going in and uh, cables running down ready to be chased in down here so you're kind of starting to feel like and get an idea of what the space may look like. And moving back upstairs, this is uh, the room above the dining room. And uh, you can see it's ready for the insulation to go in now. Now you can see it's going in. So I did kind of one layer, which kind of almost went in like a horseshoe shape. And then another layer in the middle to bring it up kind of double height. So essentially it takes up the whole space of the, uh, the height of these joists. And um, yeah, it's acoustic insulation. It was kind of, best way to describe it, I felt it was more, kind of more dense than um, regular insulation. And the uh, the back door and the um, coal store door being bricked up, which is nice. And this moving into my son's room uh, to do the same thing to the floor there. And I was working on that whilst they were doing this. And there we go, it's all blocked up. So I think these are thermalite blocks, kind of insulating blocks. And then we've got um, obviously the bricks on the outside and the bricks match the house as well. And they did a really good job of matching the bricks, which uh, I think I show in a moment. There's my son's room, all fully insulated, apart from this section here, which I'm about to finish, which is why I'm stood here. And um, yeah, no Wookiees were harmed in the making of this flooring. And there you go. So that, that looks really neat. And we've got these, they're, they're wire cut bricks. They've got this kind of wavy pattern to them. And um, I don't know why they used to do that, but they used to use them quite a lot back in the 60s. And uh, they were able to find uh, a good match for them uh, in the right size as well, because we're kind of at that point where it could be imperial, could be metric. 
and uh, yeah they did a really good job and this all went off and it looks very blended now you would never know it's there and this is all very blended as well so yeah it's um they've done a good job and there's the doorway all knocked out um of the downstairs loose this, this will have a door in it and uh, when you look inside you can kind of see around the corner here and you can see all the cable runs from the rest of the house all from the upstairs of the house and the other side of the house all waiting to be connected up to a new consumer unit and that's the view out of the doorway at the bottom of the stairs and down the stairs you can see it there so i'm just giving a few angles so you can kind of appreciate how it looks and at this point it was time to start taking up the kitchen floor um these lifted really really easily and i think at some point either the concrete had shrunk or the floor had dipped or something had happened and basically this was a space you could actually fit your whole whole fingers whole hand in <laughs> right at the edges of the room but yeah so i got all of those off and um yeah clip cleared the room out basically uh moving upstairs finishing uh, my my daughter's room so finishing all of that and uh, that's what it looked like when it was when it was all done. Put the carpet back down, and I use proper flooring screws. You can buy these kind of they're blue kind of flooring screws, and they have like kind of a design down them um, that means that when you screw them down, they don't squeak or let the board move around. And as such, and I didn't appreciate you know this was going to happen, but once I'd removed all the nails from the boards and and utilised the um, the nail holes to screw the screws down through, the floors became absolutely rock solid. There's the plaster all dry in the living room. And I miscoated it, never miscoated anything before. I had to learn how to do that and how you water it down and everything. But uh, yeah, miscoated that and I miscoated all of the plaster uh, that had been done um, and that was ready to do so in the rest of the house. And there's a new consumer unit going in. So you can see all of these boxes have come off the walls now. And everything's being wired up which is a very exciting thing to see you can also see here the uh this is the shower tray um uh, for uh, the uh, bathroom above and um the sort of plug hole is there and then it, it comes down and then runs out this this pipe here out of the house what they do is they cut the floorboards back sort of back here and then um the the sort of 18 20 mil of the floorboards is enough to create the kind of the rake necessary to uh, let the water drain away down the plug hole. Um, but it does mean that when we come to replace the bathroom, something we haven't done by, even by the time I finish this video, um, it does mean that they'll have to uh, reinstate the floor um, there when we take up the shower tray. More uh, old wallpaper found, not sure where I found that, but yeah, plenty of it. And uh, it's probably under the floor actually, because this was more, more paper, uh, more new old newspaper. So the Dixon's uh, free over 200 pounds worth of Philips CDI software. So yeah, it's uh, look, four weddings and a funeral on video disc. So I'm guessing this is probably in 94, 95. Um, and there's the new boiler going in there in the, in the garage. And of course, boilers need power. So the electrics have to be done in order for the boiler to be, you know, kind of set up. Um, oh, we've got a new outside tap as well, which is nice. It goes on there, you can see where the coal store door used to be so it went on there and you can see here that the floor is uncovered now I've taken up the carpet and uh, you can see it's sort of green and kind of a light brown and black and everything this was an asbestos tile floor and we had an asbestos survey done because of the age of the property because of the property's age we had um, this a survey done um, before we moved in and they tested a whole bunch of things they do things like they tested like a sponge underneath the sink they they uh, the kind of on the underside of the sink they tested like up in the the roof the the um, roof insulation um, the tiled floors all, all kinds of things and there was a few that came back but the only bit of asbestos other than some bits in the uh, kind of the the apex of the roof which is quite normal um and not anything you'll go anywhere near was this uh, asbestos tile floor they graded it at a very very low level of asbestos very low risk um you know asbestos um it's not nuclear waste either it's, there's no harm uh, you know asbestos is only bad if you drill into it or you grind it or you do something that basically creates uh, you know turns whatever this is into dust and then it's bad to breathe in um so what i did is when i did take these up is i had a full suit on um proper mask gloves 
everything was covered everything was fine you spray it all down you get you get there uh, like um, I used a spade to get underneath it so I could lift up whole tiles at a time you bag it up twice and then you book in with a local recycling center to take it away and it's not a fun job at all there's lots of jobs that aren't very fun you know when you're doing this kind of work to a house but in terms of de dealing with it yourself which we was allowed to do it was all permitted um then it was pretty straightforward really you just have to take some some care ah this is uh, as i mentioned right at the beginning of the video this is the um and these are the little electrical cables that we found in every room and not something we knew we had basically um the room came with the the house came with these giant three pin sockets and they were the size of a regular double plug socket but one side was at the plug and the other side was the switch where normally you get you know one side is a plug and the other side is a plug and you get the switches in the middle so um you had yes it's like a single plug socket but they had all these little adapters off them they were 15 amps as well you know when we normally use 13 amps in the uk for our appliances so um yeah crazy really but they're gone now and in doing everything to the kitchen and needing it to be plastered, we had to move our kitchen into the living room. Now, fortunately, the living room was big enough, but it did mean that we had to uh, kind of get it all get it all in there. Um, and, it, and it worked. We made that work for, well, I can't remember how long, but maybe about six weeks. Uh, it worked. It was a bit cluttered, but it worked. Moving back into the kitchen, uh, taking our tiles off now that everything's kind of out. This, these were just tiles stuck on top of tiles. So, uh, yeah, when I started taking this off, I found the tiles behind. You can see it's all looking very empty there, taking up the remainder of the floor here. You see the pantry that's been blocked up and uh, the pipes that have gone in to um, have uh, down, a little radiator in there, um, towel rail. Um, back door's been blocked up, chimney's gone, boiler's gone. Uh, this is our Tardo. This is our smart kind of heating system. Uh, just, just kind of the controller on the wall. Um, you know, electrics all done. The ceiling's been overboarded. The beams in. Um, some plastering going on. Um, yeah, this is uh, electrics going into the garage. Uh, we haven't got our lighting in yet. I think this was for our uh, heat alarm uh, for in there. Um, and we've got some runs coming down for plug sockets as well, ready. And um, no kitchen sink. We didn't have a kitchen sink for six weeks. So if you wanted to do any washing up, you had to do it upstairs in the shower. And if you wanted to get any water, the easiest place was to get it from the uh, new outside tap. Because when they um, kind of took all the uh, pipe work out of here, we also lost the outside tap, which was on the other side of this wall. But for now, we do have um, our uh, dishwasher and uh, washing machine uh, connected up, but not for long. And in taking off the tiles, a bit of the wall gave way and um, I found it was just basically a very thin section of plaster propped up with old Marks and Spencer's plastic bags. Loads and loads and loads of them, as you do. And uh, this is the big big main switch, which I found in a box of junk, ready to go to uh, the tip or be recycled, rather, um, that come out of the house. And in taking off all the tiles, I found the original... Uh, pipes for the tap so I think this would have been uh, hot and cold and um, probably would have gone into a big kind of porcelain sink maybe even a, even a double porcelain sink and um, yeah they were that's that's it that's all that there is of them there going down to there and then they stopped there why they wouldn't take out the rest of them I have no idea but anyway <laughs> found those and took those out and there's uh, all the all the electrical chase has gone in and uh, we got these, uh, this was just all go over the floor to uh, protect the floors and whatnot from when the, all the plastering was going to be done. And that's looking at the uh, dining room there. And there's the uh, wall plastered and all of the inside of the downstairs loo plastered. All up around where the pad was and all of that. And this is, uh, I can't remember what they called this, but it's like the backing stuff. It's kind of like a thicker plaster they put in when you've got to kind of fill like, you know, holes and stuff like that. So that when they, it's kind of bring the wall up level. So when they do a skim of plaster, it's all nice and neat. And there's the room plastered. And I've got a load of fans trying to dry it out because at this point I'm on a uh, limited schedule of being able to 
um, get it all painted afterwards. You can see it all slowly drying out. And the thicker areas as well, like around here and the chimney and everything, they took a little while to dry. And you know where the chases were, you can see very clearly there. It's all kind of drying out. And then I found more, more paper. Uh, Tuesday, October 30th, 1984. This was from the living room. Um, and you can see at this point, I've taken out the asbestos because there was this sort of, I don't know what it was, like a black kind of glue that they used to stick them all down with. And this is what was left on the floor afterwards. It wasn't sticky or anything. It was completely, um, completely, you know, um, matte texture, you know, not sticky at all. Um, but it did smell for a few days, um, I guess, until it sort of went off. And there's me sort of filling holes and tidying up the hallway. There's the kitchen all dry. And there's miscoated, miscoated the whole kitchen. There's the downstairs uh, loo, and you can see we've had a box built um, with a uh, with a door on it to uh, hide all of the consumer unit, uh, which looks rather nice. And there's all the, yeah, all the asbestos floors gone in the hallway there. Down lights are on. It's really starting to come together. And then we had the flooring put in. So we decided to have the flooring put in first um, because it was going to make the most sense kind of to run run it throughout the whole of the downstairs, really, um, except for the living room, which was going to be carpeted. And this was what they do to level it. They uh, poured over this latex uh, and it goes all over the floor in a sort of a thin layer and it kind of just levels the whole thing as best it can, really. And yeah, and here's the kitchen with the big latex pour. And um, these are the sort of the stands where the uh, chimney breast was, but we had to put a, uh, a you know, a, a bit of plastic underneath it, and uh, which we didn't have to hand at this point, um, you know, to protect it from rising damp and whatnot. And there's what it looks like finished. And it is drying. You can see it's sort of dried around the corner here, and it's it will dry and going in there. Pretty quick to dry, a couple of hours. And there's the glue going down, which my cat decided to walk through. And uh, the flooring, so this was Cardine flooring, um, Van Gogh glue down, Cardine flooring. And um, yeah, it's lovely, it's like a, an oak. I can't remember exactly what kind of oak, they do several oaks, but um, there's kind of an oak that they have. And um, yeah, we want that to go all the way through. So yeah, it's looking looking nice. It's just testing various colors on the wall here. And all of the testing that we did, I think we eventually actually went with this one, which was the closest to sort of the kind of the new kitchen that we were putting in and um, wasn't too light, wasn't too too dark, but um, trying to find one was very, very difficult. And it was at this point that we learned that there's quite a difference between the Dulux trade um, colors and the colors that you get regular Dulux in somewhere like B&Q or Homebase or something like that, or Wix or something. And um, that caused a bit of a confusion when we started painting and it looked kind of pink and it should have been more sort of slightly green and there's because there is a difference but um, they were very good and Dulux Trade actually gave us a free tin of paint um, as compensation so that was that was okay and here's the uh, color going on in the hallway and uh, yeah and uh, and everything everything finished here walls and ceiling all, all done got a bit of skirting board to go on here but it's looking looking nice going all the way through into the bathroom there and this has been done and depending on your screen you you may or may not be able to tell but the whole room was um obviously miscoated and then we've got got it along here you can just about see the line runs along here where my cursor is and then along here and then there's kind of like that and then there's a, a break here where the kind of the extractor hood and so on is going to be and then there's a bit a bit more of a break there but essentially around the top around the bottom um, up to about this point here I believe is painted and then the rest of the room is painted as well it's very subtle but um, when depending on what light you're looking in it um, it can look quite dark and quite light it's, it's really nice and it is very much an off-white but um, it does look it does look good and very clean nice big bright space and then our kitchen arrived um, which we got from Wren and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's going to take us sort of a week of this sort of being here before it got installed. But um, 
yeah, we, we, we were going to live with our uh, actual kitchen, <laughs> the one that came with the house for a little while. And once we'd had this lovely big space made, we were like, well, we don't want to live yeah, out, of the, <laughs> out of the living room or put the old kitchen back in here. Really, it'd be nice to have a kitchen. And fortunately, um, Ren were uh, were quite competitive and um, there's one not too far from us. And we were we were quite pleased with kind of everything that they did. So we ended up ordering one from there. It took a couple of weeks to arrive, but they were pretty quick, actually. And uh, yeah, here's just a reminder of the kitchen that we're currently living with um, and what our living room looks like. So you can see that one side of the house is very much getting completed, whilst the other side isn't. And there's the downstairs loo. It's all gone in, um, sink and, and toilet and, and towel rail. Um, but yeah, no, no door yet. <laughs> and there's the kitchen going in. So you can see, you know, some cabinets going in there. Still a mess. And then some of the doors going on, cabinets on the walls. And then all, the work surface on there and sort of various things being put into place like the uh, kind of double oven and the washing machine. And then a bit more again, all looking a bit more tidy. And the sink's in and the hob. Well, the hob's being cut out by the looks of it actually. But uh, yeah, it's all starting to come together nicely. So we've got, yeah, um, all the cupboard doors on and we've still got sort of all, like the tops to go on and underneath and, you know, the kickboards and all that sort of stuff. But it's it's looking good. And uh, yeah, there's the under counter lights on and everything's everything's coming together. And uh, that was it. That was actually the um, the kitchen all fully installed and this is me unpacking everything um waiting for uh, a few couple of friends to come over and have a few drinks to celebrate <laughs> and then i moved into the living room so the carpets were all so old that as soon as you started taking them up the backing just disintegrated some places like around the edges here was stuck to the floor i'm guessing that at some point they had used a glue to glue it spray it down in the corners and do it that way rather than using kind of a tax or something like that. And in the 80s, I don't know if you would have used kind of um, tax around the outside of the room or not. But uh, either way, this was, uh, it was glued down in the middle and then in it just, it, everywhere else it was just falling to bits. It was dust, complete dust, as you can see. And then, yeah, after a while I was able to hoover the whole thing and then also take up the asbestos floor um, the same tiles as the hallway. Uh, those tiles were also in the dining room as well and um, got rid of all of them and um, that completes their complete removal from the house. So uh, so yeah, it's just giving us a nice big space. And uh, I love this radiator. It's a really long but low radiator. Normally you can see here though that you can see the pipes go up kind of next to the window and apparently this was quite common. Um, instead of putting them into the corner or something where you could kind of you know, hide them away or box them in or something. They put them up next to the window so that when you had the curtains, they would kind of hide behind the curtains. So you'd only see a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. But um, yeah, just not not what I was used to, not coming from a house anyway that was built in the year 2000, my last house was, uh, where everything's in the walls so you don't see it. There's the living room furniture back in for a little while. Had that for a couple more weeks. Oops. And a uh, view from the other side there. And then wallpapering. So this this wall at the back was was pretty bad actually, and we would have had to have spent a week sanding it to get it flat. So um, our painter decorator suggests that we um, wallpaper it instead, like lining paper it, and then paint it. Um, and that was fine. The rest of the rest of the room was okay. And there it is, painted, um, and looking much much better. It's nice to see it all kind of one color now. And you can see I've also got the uh, the TV on the wall and. Just kind of, you can start to see it's becoming more of a more of a room, and then we had the uh, the carpet go down. So we had this nice thick underlay. I think it's like eleven mil underlay, and then um, and then the carpet put down over the top. And we also went off to uh, IKEA and bought some new lamps and things like that to try and give it a nicer sort of look. And this is the <laughs> this is the back window. Um, you, the many of the windows are blown and uh, this one actually had about a centimeter and a half of water inside the window between the two window panes um see it was gross and in the summer it dries out and in the winter it's there as you can see 
And uh, moving up into the loft at this point, I want to start insulating the loft better and kind of tidying up. There was a lot of tidying up to do um, from, uh, you know, all the brick dust and everything like that. And I just kept finding all this old cabling. Uh, and it was all old black rubber cabling as well. Um, and you can see it's this old, very old, like thin yellow insulation. And it was only about, I don't know, two centimeters thick at the most, which I'm sure at one point was good enough, but of course not anymore. So I uh, I started doing all of that. And uh, I decided that actually, you know, the bathroom we want, a bit like the uh, the kitchen dino, the bathroom we want is, is not two separate rooms, it's one room. So I went about taking off this, taking off the radiator, which you can see I'm about to do here, and, uh, and taking the wall down. So it's just a quick look again at kind of what this what this room looks like. And uh, yeah, taking the radiator off and the lovely water that comes out of it. And then taking the electrics out. And <laughs> I took the toilet roll holder off and you can see this line along here from where the toilet roll has there's been like this is all sun bleach but not this bit where the there's a shadow of the toilet roll would be i thought that was quite funny and there i am steaming again steaming it all off because otherwise it holds the whole wall together you know it's so sticky and i did the other side as well and uh, then just started taking the tiles off again because they just kind of hold the whole wall together and then uh, what i thought i'd do is start drilling holes so chase like kind of uh, get the, the render off of here find the edges of the block and then work out the dimensions of the blocks and then measure up across the wall and then drill holes in the hope that i could essentially knock out a big block at a time well it turned out that the wall was made up of all sorts of bits of blocks and that didn't work so my array of holes didn't really work but um yeah i started taking them out um, so you can see here, these are actually bricks right at the top where blocks would have been too big and they would have had to cut them down. So you start taking them all out, looking through from one room to the other. And that is dust. That's not a, a hazy photo or a fingerprint on the lens. That is just dust everywhere. I will not miss dust in my house. There we go. And there it is, all clean, all done. <laughs> and it very much looks like you've taken the wall out here. Um, and this is how this room currently stands. It doesn't look any different. We've had these capped below the floor, um, but otherwise uh, it, it looks exactly the same. We haven't done anything with it yet. We're just getting to grips with what we want the room to look like. It's a slightly oddly shaped room. Uh, we have got the spare door here, but we do get that blocked up, which we'll see. And then we've got the doors going in finally. So um, yeah, these are nice, uh, nice oak doors, oak veneered doors rather, uh, and the kitchen door. And the living room door, which we had hung on the other side. So all of the doors in the house were kind of, I think they could have called like privacy hung or something like that. So essentially they're hung on this side so that when you walk in, you walk in and look at the wall. You don't walk into the room. Um, and uh, that, was, that was done for privacy, uh, apparently. Um, we're not used to that. Every house we've always lived in have always been doors opening towards the wall. Um, and I feel that it gives a bigger space as well. So um, that's what we've we've done. So we hung these on the other side. And we'll do the same with the bedroom doors when we uh, when we do that, which we still haven't done as uh, as per the time of recording this video. But yeah, I think they look nice. Um, moving back up into the loft, uh, I've got these loft legs. So the insulation that was up there uh, in these bags was really good insulation. Um, so all we need to do is get some loft legs to be able to uh, put insulation between them and then put boards on top so we can start boarding the loft. And the idea is that we board the whole loft like that. And um, But you need to obviously raise the uh, the, the height of this to, in order to get um, all of the insulation in. Um, so I started putting the uh, loft legs in into an array like that and then um, putting the insulation in between and then putting the boards on top. And um, you can see that it doesn't always work. I mean, there might be a better way to do all of this, but uh, probably by putting these like further over and everything, but then you'd lose space right at the ends. And I was trying to make as much space as possible, but essentially you can have, uh, you can have areas like this where they kind of 
they don't they don't meet in the middle um, why they don't put a little edge on on here like they do here where you can kind of slot them into each other why they don't do that along the edges as well I don't know um, so that you, they give a bit more structure to them when you slot them together but hey ho there we go um, and this that tiny little radiator which we realized could do with being removed really turned out that you can see that this end's been capped this end went down it was capped under this side this had been capped there's a cap here it could all do with coming out so uh, we're going to have that removed <laughs> There's this fantastic old switch in there. We think it was from an, a, like an immersion heater or a big sort of electric storage heater or something like that. Um, not electric storage heater, but uh, electric um, water uh, storage heater. Um, and it just made this fantastic clunk sound when you turned it on and stuff. So, yes, yeah, so that's that little room there. And uh, this is where I was thinking about putting more of my networking, uh, which I do eventually do, as you'll see in a, another video, uh, which is why we had this taken out so I could utilize the space better. And there we go, all done. And this is the garden. We've sort of in between everything, we've been taking out all of the bushes, the great big bushes, mowing the grass, kind of trying to deal with it. It's covered in weeds. It's not great. We've made a sort of a space here for the tortoise so he doesn't fall in the pond and we sort of blocked up the little area. So he's just got, he's got run of the whole garden. Um, but ultimately, you know, just trying to make it a bit more, bit nicer and a bit more, um, a bit more sort of family friendly, more space for the kids to, to kind of play in and stuff. And we've got these two trees, um, but they're, they're, you know, they're like the Lilandis. They grow really quickly. And there was other stumps along this fence where there had been other ones that had been taken out in the past, I'm guessing for privacy, but um, we didn't want them. And you can kind of see how much shadow they create in the garden. So for more light, we thought we'd take them out. So uh, here we go. So my me and my father-in-law um, started taking them out. And uh, my father-in-law had a chainsaw and a can-do attitude. So he was very helpful in uh, helping us take those down. And he's done a lot of gardening work in his life and is pretty good at uh, taking them all down. So that's what we did. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like down with these two massive piles of um, foliage to get rid of. And um, it's one of those things where I think the work needs to be done. And I'll worry about how to get rid of the waste afterwards. A bit like when I did the chimneys. Need to take the chimneys out. Not sure what to do with the waste. I'll worry about it later. Um, so anyway, I was able to find someone that would take these out and grind the stumps out. Um, there was, you could see there's actually a stump there. There's two over here. There was one in the front garden as well. They did all of that. And, um, yeah, they were, they were really helpful and they were able to come in like a couple of days. So we were able to get rid of all of that. And this is what the windows look like on the outside of the house. They're all aluminium frames and wooden surrounds and tiles on the outside and, they they a lot of them were blown some of them were single glazed the double glazing was really thin it was impossible to date them really um, and there was about three or four different types of double glazing in the house as well um, that needed to be kind of dealt with um, that's my office window there tiny little pantry window still um, the back door and uh, where we'd had a cat flap put in and yeah and and they were they weren't very secure i mean they only secured on these handles you know there was no locking mecha mechanism inside the frame or anything like that they literally just locked on the handle so you pulled them close pulled the handle shut and that was considered locked um but you know give them a good pull and they'll break the handles and open the window so um not very secure and this back door into the garage well it was more tape than door uh, as you can see and you couldn't open this one you had to open this one and yeah, how blown the windows were and everything. Little single single glazed unit next to the front door and the old curtains that we've left there for now. As you can see there. I quite like this style of front door, this old front door, but um yeah, it was it was wood and it wasn't straight and all that sort of stuff. And the but the the bathroom, the toilet room had this window here as did the uh, the main bedroom and they were the newest ones in the house, but they were nearly 20 years old. They were installed in 2003. Um, so yeah, they were kind of coming to the end of like their warranty, things like that, you know, the gaskets will start to go. They might start blowing, you know, themselves. And you can see that they're just, you know, it's all so old really. Yeah. It's the main bedroom one. Um, and the, uh, when someone came around to quote, they said, well, this is very high here. You know, they would just built it up, built it up, built it up really to make it fit in the space. But you know, if we had our windows replaced, you know, we'd get quite a lot of, um, window back, uh, not so much frame. So that's what we did. We went through the process of, uh, 
replacing all the double glazing windows and doors in the whole house and of course it decided to rain on the day that they came uh, after weeks of sunshine and blue skies and dry weather um, so the rain started to come in this is my son's room um, yeah they were knocking it all out um, but you can see here quite a large chunk of the wall has been taken away and that's because uh, when he was taking out the tiled sills on the inside um, where they had been baking in the sun through the windows for 60 years sort of 50 60 years um, they were rock solid so when he took went to take them off he, he tried using a breaker he tried using hand tools he tried drilling them uh, you know um, out and everything and it was it was a nightmare so um, he uh, anyway he, he was able to knock them out in the end but he said they were the hardest window sills he's ever experienced uh, and he had been double glazing for 30 years <laughs> um, but they did mean that sometimes a piece came out with uh, with a bit of the wall but they did look lovely and clear and they were you know proper secure windows and nice handles and all that stuff and they did a great job they finished it off with these kind of surrounds and uh, and we had them uh, window boards put in rather than tiles you can see what we've actually had our ceiling plastered um, as well there. As you can see here, the top windows are all done now and the bottom windows are to go in. It's such a strange design of window, but you know you can't get a side hung window this large. So you have to have these somewhere, but you either have them at the bottom or the top. That's the landing window going in and the bathroom window and the uh, garage doors, which look really nice. Uh, nice double opening doors and you know no more tape to contend with living room and where they had to take out the tiles they had to put either a full course or a half course of bricks in um, everywhere so uh, so yes and they managed to match the bricks again to the to the existing bricks so yeah much much nicer and we had them put at the top so we've got two side openers and two um, sort of fan light openers ones that open out from the uh, hinges at the top and uh, this little downstairs loo, um, little stipper light window, thought it looked ri rather nice. And uh, looking out of the back of the living room, I mean, it's all nice and clear. It's just, we were just so happy with it. And in the uh, diner, when they took off the window board, which had a real sort of curve to, to the corner that was sat over here, um, realized that they had just stuck the window board down directly on top of the original tiles. And uh, I wanted to remove them, but sadly it was gonna it was gonna cause a problem with like the measurements everywhere. So um, we had to just stick the existing window board down on top of this one, uh, but doing a better job this time. <laughs> but yeah, it just gives you an idea of you know kind of how budget um, I guess the last the last owners were. And there's the kitchen window there, so rather than having two opening, so we just have one now, and kind of, and it matches the window above. But um, in doing so, the 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 uh, plaster fell off the underside of the lintel so they had to plaster that back up but that's okay and we had a uh, our window board paint uh, put in and painted there and this is the uh, the front door so again stipper light and the back door all glass now and then we moved on to painting as uh, so this is my son's room and you can see here that uh, we went for a, a blue which is nice and light and uh, my daughter's room we went for a sort of a purple which we liked, and more loft, <laughs> more loft work. And then I start working on the stairs, so we wanted to move the, uh, start doing the carpeting all the way up the stairs, on the landing, into the bedrooms, and so on, as we were decorating up there. And so I started taking out the carpet, and um, uh, in doing so, obviously it all disintegrated, but also you can see here that because there was no underlay on it, the backing of the carpet, this sort of wavy backing of the carpet, um, over the years where people have been treading on it um, had actually dented the pine stairs all the way along. Um, but you can also see that it exposed, there used to be stair rods. So this bit was painted, it was a high gloss, and then you would have had the carpet at the middle with a, a rod across them, across the stair, you know, keeping it all together. And um, yeah, so I didn't know, you know, we would have had that, but it looks like we've had that, maybe, maybe a different one at a later date as well. Uh, and we also had this section here um, which I think was the the cause of this crack going through the stairs, albeit that they're not you know structural or anything like that. It's still perfectly solid stair um, from where a um, stair lift was, uh, which was removed before we moved in. There's a better sort of view of the the carpet, the backing of the carpet, and how it's dented there. 
But then I took it all up. <laughs> this is a floorboard I found on the landing. Uh, you can see just about, if you look carefully, there is a biro line all the way along it, not pencil, but biro. And then someone has cut it, I presume using a handsaw. Um, and they must have given that job to the apprentice who had never held a saw in their life before because <laughs> it was certainly not a straight line at all. And as such, they were squeaking because they were rubbing against each other. So anyway, uh, this is the, some of the floorboards were pine. Some of them, you know, were, were sort of pine replaced. Some of them weren't. But uh, when I took them up to insulate the floor um, and kind of hoover it all out and everything, uh, quite a lot of the floor needed to be re um, sort of mended in some way. So I had these really thick, like solid strips of wood left over from when we had the kitchen done. And I uh, used them um, to give me something else to screw into and, and a bit better bracing for some of the floorboards. Uh, and then I marked on all the floorboards where everything was because all the cables ran through the upstairs. I wanted to make sure I knew where everything was. I didn't screw into anything. I screwed down the stairs as well, stopped them from squeaking a little bit and just started insulating everything. And uh, you can see this orange cabling here is from when I did my networking. Um, again, coming in another video. And yeah, that's some of the boards up and insulating and uh, getting it all down. And then the uh, wallpaper started coming off uh, all around here. It's a very difficult area. It's a very, very tall section here. Very difficult to get up right the way up into this point, but started uh, working all that through. And then the carpet going down in the children's rooms. So, uh, so yeah, nice thick lemon underlay again, and then um, carpet down. And the carpet was the same. So the living room was sort of like a beige color, and we wanted a gray color to go uh, upstairs and it's the same carpet throughout the entire of the upstairs and down the stairs as well. Let's all the paper off and this is the uh, the main bedroom and uh, you can see the state this is how we live with it for you know for ages uh, really um, I don't know eight nine months um, bits plastered you know seen plastered um, all needs to be done it's about three or four different colors in there um, needs to be sorted so um taking up the carpet there and again not a, a a thumbprint on the camera lens there this hazy picture you see is the dust from when i took the carpet out uh, that is that is what comes up into the air you can see how much the backing is disintegrated so it just needs to go and there's me hoovering it all up nice and nice and hoovered and then i started using my circular saw again to running running up and down the boards cutting the tongues off and then either side of the room to um give me a, a, a section of boards that I can cut up, that I can pull up rather, um, because some of these boards will obviously go underneath this wall into the next room, so I need a point where I can kind of break them off really. There we go, all hoovered up again. And it's just taking them out and you can see all the uh, the nails again. So you just got to hammer these out uh, as is and then, yeah, put it back down again. And this is what uh, me and my decorator came to refer to as a sparky special. Um, that's something the electrician did when they took up the floor at some point in time and ran cables and everything and uh, then couldn't get the floorboard back down in the right spot because they had cut it perfectly. Uh, you know, this floorboard was cut perfectly in line with this joist. So there was nothing to kind of screw into. So what they did is they literally screwed in uh, just a piece of wood with as many screws and then hammered nails in as well to hold it in place and then put the ball back on top for something to screw into. So yeah, um, took all of that out and, and and fixed the floor. You know, put down a proper little bit and attached it and fixed it all up. And then it was to to work insulating the whole lot. So um, so that's what I started doing. Again, no Wookiees harmed. And then the floor back down again. And you can see this is just a small collection of the vast number of nails and things that I pulled out of the house. And then uh, the room got painted and it just looks so nice. It, it does look similar color to the living room, but it is a diff slightly different color of green. But yes, yeah, so nice to see it. Just one color on the walls and one color on the ceiling. And then the moving into the office, um, which had been 
it had been sort of neglected the most really because um we we when we moved everything out from the other rooms it all got put in the office and uh you know everything was disassembled and put in the office and and so you know the the plaster couldn't get in there to actually plaster all of this up properly um you know so it it was it was looking a complete mess really it, you know where anywhere that work had been done in this room was was a mess so uh again taking up the carpet taking up the old newspaper hovering it all up here's another sparky special uh with the bit of wood still on there um and uh and yeah just start running the circular saw around and we did come across a little bit of wood worms the only place in the house we found it um we think it wasn't active um it it was there was no little mounds of anything uh and you know obviously as i was going along hoovering up and everything i didn't see anything at all so uh we did end up treating it though um on anywhere that we found it and uh, you see a little bit along the floorboard here or just on the underside um and then yeah and it was all done and dusted let it dry and then it was all good um and you can see here a, a bit of a a bit of a fix on part of this board and um, running down the middle there and then um yeah and then coming around to painting it there's the carpet going in in the uh, main bedroom as well it just looks so nice so nice to see it all coming together And here's the office. So it's a really nice sort of, it's sort of like a dark green, dark blue. I'm sort of looking around the room that I'm in right now. And yeah, it's a really nice kind of, I guess, teal sort of a color. Um, but it's nice and dark. You know, you're looking at bright screens. Having a darker background is actually quite quite good for, you know, your eyes. Or certainly I find it good for my eyes. So yeah, having a bit darker allows, you to, allows me to concentrate a bit better. And then a few things up on the wall. And then a bit more uh, cloud nine. And then uh, the carpet down there which I think is looking, looking great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we had the bathroom door all blocked up. And in doing so, I actually discovered that uh, that wall has quite a curve to it. And you might be able to see there's kind of a, quite a gap here. There's hardly any gap over here. And when the, uh, when the, when the door was in place, this section here was flat. Um, but you wouldn't realize that actually this wall has quite a curve to it and um, put the... Uh, the spirit level across it in several places and um yeah sure enough it is it is uh it is quite curved but um it's kind of quirky i kind of like it there it's all painted up and finally the carpet going in slightly different underlay slightly thinner underlay for to make it easier on the stairs and whatnot but um yeah carpet going in upstairs as well and that kind of completes all of that this was kind of tricky this kind of coming around here um but uh we think it looks quite nice and just to show sort of the contrast of colors going on which is nice and that's it that is that little bip uh, if you heard it there is, is the end of the slideshow and that is all the work that we've done so far to the house so we've still got the upstairs bathroom to do um, I will have a video coming about networking soon and if you've gotten to the end of this video listening to my droney monotonous voice and you thought this was interesting um, please feel free to like the video. If you've got any questions about anything that we've done, um, feel free to leave a comment. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching and listening. And I look forward to posting another video uh, soon. Thanks very much.